Okay, so today we are going to look at what it means to have unshakable faith. And our text is Hebrews 11, 1 through 16. And this is the text that has the list of champions of the faith of Isaiah and all and Abraham and all of the great champions. But I, I want to highlight two uh, Bible verses in there, two texts. One is Hebrews 11 verse 1 and the other one is Hebrews 11 verse 6. So the first one says this, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That word their substance means faith is the foundation. The word is foundational. Faith is what underpins or is the, if you like, the, the, the backing, the, the thing that backs up your hope. So faith is the thing that backs up your hope. It's the thing that guarantees your hope. So our hopes must be more than just wishful thinking. They must be rooted in faith. The second verse is Hebrews 11 verse 6 and it says now without faith it is impossible to please God. Now hopefully all of us want to be in the place that we're living a life that's pleasing to God and the writer of Hebrews tells us that the type of life or the type of person that's pleasing to God is a person who lives by faith. Now we're going to define faith in a minute so we'll leave that for a second but it tells us that without it it is impossible to please God. So the implication is a person who is not a faithful person displeases God. And we know that that's true because we see that in the life of Jesus. We see Jesus rebuking the disciples when they're on the boat and they're on their way across the, um, across the waters in the storm. And Jesus rebukes them and he says to them, where was your faith? And then there's another occasion where Jesus looks at the disciples and he says to them, you believe at last and you can catch this, the frustration in Jesus's voice that he's looking for a people of faith. So this is why it's so important for us as God's people to be, or have our lives rooted in faith. He goes on to say, those who come to God must believe that he is and that God is a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. And that is not a popular subject generally. We don't like the idea that some people get rewarded and others don't. But this text clearly makes that statement that, that there is reward for earnestness. God rewards passion. God rewards those who earnestly seek him. So even as we've been in this time of prayer and extended prayer, there is reward that comes as a result of persistence. And we need to not be afraid of that. It's not that we've got a ministry of works but we do acknowledge the fact that God rewards us when we do seek after him. So this is why it's so important for us to be a people of faith. So the question arises, if, if faith is so important, if faith underpins our hopes, and if it's impossible to please God without faith, how do I get it? How do I get to the place that I have a, 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 a life of faith? So Romans 10 verse 17 answers that question and this is what Romans 10 verse 17 says so faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of God so faith is not some separate kind of entity but faith is the product of our relationship with Jesus so if we want to have unshakable faith the place that unshakable faith is going to be born is out of relationship with God. Now, the text says Romans 10, 17 says without, sorry, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So the implication then is the way that we come into a place of faith is by us being in a place of conversation and communion with God. And that's reflected in the life of Jesus. When the enemy comes to Jesus and says to Jesus, turn these stones into bread, Jesus responds and says, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now the word that Jesus uses there for word is the same word that's used here. So you probably know there's two words in Greek that were translated into word in English. One of them is logos, which is the written word, the canon of scripture. And then there is the rhema. And the rhema is the freshly spoken word or the current word, what God is currently saying to you or to me. So how do I 
get unshakable faith? How do I come to a place of unshakable faith? It comes to me, it happens when I spend time with God in a place of faith and I read and meditate over God's word and allow God to minister his word to me. And in all of the people that we've read about in the um, in the scriptures, in, the, in Hebrews 11, all of those people, each one of them, all had a personal relationship with God. They, I, it says about Moses that he was a friend of God, that he saw God face to face. So the way for us to come into that place of having unshakable faith is by spending time with the unshakable one. And the unshakable one is God. And you become the product of the environment that you hang around in. So if you're hanging around in the world which is being tossed to and fro by all kinds of stuff, by the news and by by all kinds of things that are being flown around, by fake news, by true news, and we're building our lives there, well, we know that we're going to be unstable because that world is unstable. But if we obey the word of Jesus where he says, the one who builds his house upon the rock will stand in the storm, the rock being who? Being Jesus. When we build our house upon the rock, that's when we come into the place of stable faith, a place where we're not shaken. That doesn't mean that we don't have moments of fear or moments of anxiety, but in the midst of it, God meets us in the midst of it. You see, I've noticed as, as I've looked at the subject of faith that there's actually, I reckon, about nine different levels of faith that you see in the New Testament. There's the extraordinary faith of the centurion who tells Jesus, just speak the word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus marvels at that and says, this is extraordinary faith. So Jesus meets the centurion at that level. Then you've got the Canaanite woman who comes and she persists. And Jesus says, you've got great faith. And Jesus meets with her where she is. Then you've got the woman with the issue of blood and she pushes past the crowd and she persists and Jesus turns around to her and he says, your persistent faith has healed you. He doesn't literally say persistence, but, the, but her fact that she persisted to pursue Jesus, Jesus responds and says, your faith has healed you. So Jesus honours her persistent faith. Then you've got the man who's, bald, who's blind and Jesus mixed the mud, puts the mud on the blind man's eyes and tells him to go and wash. He goes off, he washes, and he's healed. His obedient faith produces healing. Then you've got Jarius, and Jarius' daughter has died, and Jarius really is in a place of fear and, and despair. And Jesus, what does he do? Does he rebuke him because he doesn't have great or extraordinary faith like the others? No, what he does is he meets Jarius exactly where he is, and he says, have faith. Just be in a place of trust because you're going to see the glory of God. So he extends compassion. So maybe you're in that place right now and you're feeling a bit shaken and you're feeling a bit unstable. Well, Jesus will meet you there. So he doesn't want you to deny your circumstances. He just wants to deny you. He wants you to deny that your circumstances have control over you, but that God is in charge. You then go a little bit further and you find the leper, the, the leper, the leper and the leper turns to Jesus and says, if you want to, you can make me clean. So again, Jesus doesn't say to him, well, I'm not going to make you clean unless you've got extraordinary faith like the centurion. But what Jesus does is he meets Jar meets the, the, the leper where he is in his place of, I know you can do it, I just don't know if you will. And God meets him there. So even in that level of faith, Jesus still meets him there. Then you've got the man with the son who's demonized, and, and he turns to Jesus. The disciples have been trying to cast the demon out. And he turns to Jesus and he says, if you can do something, can you do it? And Jesus' response, he goes, no, I'm not going to do it because you don't have the extraordinary faith of the, of the centurion. That isn't what happens. Jesus actually responds to him and says, if I can, all things are possible for those who believe. The man responds, I believe, help me in my unbelief. And Jesus steps towards the man and meets him at the level of faith that he has and moves in his life. And I just find that's just so beautiful that he doesn't rebuke him. He just comes and meets him where he is at the level of faith that he has. Then you go on and you've got the, um, the account of the man by the pool. And Jesus says to him, do you want to be well? And he says, well, I want to be well, but everybody else is getting it and I'm not. 
And even in that, when the man's kind of almost just come to a place of, I just don't believe it's going to happen, Jesus meets him there. That he doesn't he doesn't rebuke him, he doesn't kind of go to him, well, you shouldn't be doing that, you should have the, the extraordinary faith of the centurion or the, or the great faith of the Canaanite woman. What he does is he meets him in the midst of where he's despairing, where he's saying, this is happening for everybody else, but not for me, and he meets him where he is. So how do you have unshakable faith? How do you do that? Is it by pumping it up and making it bigger? It really isn't. It's by standing in the midst of your circumstances, being real, being honest to God where we are and in the midst of that, looking at God and saying, I know you can do this or will you do this? But bringing our life to him. And when we do that, Jesus meets us where we are. So regardless where you are, regardless how you feel, regardless what circumstances are going on, Jesus will meet us where we are if we simply communicate to him. And um, some of these guys didn't really communicate to Jesus with great triumphant faith. They just came with Jesus with an awareness of the fact that he was the answer to the situation. And that's all that God requires of us. That's what it means to have unshakable faith. Not faith in our faith, but faith in the one in whom we direct our faith, which is Jesus Christ, who is the rock upon which our house should be built. Amen. So, Father, I thank you for all of us that we won't be those that deny our circumstances or try and live in, in a place of being superheroes or, 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 or feel like we've got to pump something up. But I thank you, Lord, for each one of us. You want to meet us exactly where we are, whether we be in the exceptional faith or the extraordinary faith or the if you can faith or if you could faith. It doesn't matter. You love us where we are and you want to touch us where we are. So I thank you, Lord, for your presence on our lives. And I thank you for helping us to put our faith in you, the unshakable one. Amen.